G'day there. In this video I would like to demonstrate my new solar charging setup that I have. So I've got a lot of wires and stuff everywhere down here so I can have some meters attached, but here's a very simplified version. Right here I have my little solar panel and it's connected up to this Darlington um, TIP122 transistor based drill thief boost circuit which is filling up this capacitor which is a thousand microfarads. And then I have this little LED and transistor set up. As you can see, the LED is lit, indicating that there's a charge going on, which actually allows this cap to fill up to about 5 volts to charge my 2 volt lead allen battery. So they're about 1.8 volts static. They need 2 volts to charge, as you can see on the meters here. So it can get quite small. As you can see, I've only got the two jumper leads going down to one of those batteries there. I do have 2.34 volts charging up into that. Now, so that we can see what's going on, I've sort of spread it out a bit down here with some meters and stuff. So let's look at this one which is adjustable. You can see if I turn this potentiometer down, that does drop things off a bit. If I turn it back up, I'm oh, not a meter lead loose on my cap there, but yeah. So you can see here this is the voltage in that capacitor. This is the voltage in the battery that it's charging, which is this one. My big greenie, which I kind of jazzed up a bit by bunging across a 12 volt battery for an hour or two the other day, boiled the buggery out of it, and oh, look at what happened inside. It stopped being all fluid on top, which is nice. This bit on top is really hard. I actually had to drill a hole in it to get more water in there. Anyway, back to the boost circuit. So this is the basic idea here. You can use an LED or regular diodes. This is, you can see pretty clearly what's going on here. That's my collector, base and emitter on my transistor. So as I apply voltage to here, it needs the, to break over both the diode as well as the 0.5 to 0.7 voltage drop through the transistor. So in this case, I can get about 3.5 volts of voltage drop between going through the LED and then through the transistor and out the emitter. But that switches the transistor on and then you don't have any voltage drop from your collector to your emitter. But as soon as it drops down below the volt power to turn on the LED, it switches off again and lets the cap charge back up. And as you can see from these constantly lit LEDs, it is doing it quite fast. I've checked on the scope. It will sync up with the timing of the oscillator. And so I'm running in full sun here at the moment, about 230 kilohertz on most of these guys. And it is charging my batteries very well, I must say. So, there you have it. And the other thing I'd like to mention briefly while we're here is the um, TIP122. That potentiometer there, it's a 50k one, and as you saw, when my leads don't disconnect, turning it down will turn down the amount that we're charging by. The LED does get dimmer. So I turn it back up, the LED gets brighter. I don't know if the camera's really showing the LED change. And my charging voltage goes up again. And you can see I've got a nice 3.5 volts differential there between what's in my cap and what's in my battery. But yet, as that transistor's clearly turned on, indicated by the LED on, there's no voltage drop from the collector to the emitter. So I've got a 3 point something volt differential charging bonus which is what you need to charge a battery I do get less milliamps obviously watts law applies so the same watts are going through I've worked it out it's very close to the same watts there is a tiny loss it's about 98% efficient but pretty much the same watts going to your battery but at a higher voltage differential and if you just hooked it straight up to the capacitor which does still charge the battery anyway but I think this works better so right, there you have it oh that's what I was saying this transistor um, that's an 18 volt panel. Uh, with the tip 122 and that power supply toroid, it still works at zero resistance. It still oscillates, which is pretty good. Very handy for this kind of setup. And these will keep charging well into the evening. Well, not till it gets dark. This one will drop out, be the first to drop out. About four in the afternoon. It's currently just past nine o'clock in the morning. This is an east-facing window. 
So get lots of sun through here for the next hour or two. And I think you can see on my blinds, I do have an overhang up there that's giving me some shade in this corner, which is why I've selected this corner. Not too many hours of sunlight. These guys are going to be all in the shade in the next hour or so. And they will continue charging all day. These two lights down here won't go out until it's completely dark outside well after sunset. This little panel's a bit more pathetic. It'll go out about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But it'll go well past after the sun's gone over the other side of the building. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.